Well, good morning. Um, I'm really pleased to be with you this morning. And I take away from the discussion and from my own experience that the new normal is achieving and living out the mission of our organizations with less and accountable for results and underline accountable about a million times. Um, health Partners, for uh, those of you that don't know us, we're a consumer-governed, not-for-profit organization. Our health plan serves just under a million people. Our delivery system serves about 400,000, um, a little tilted towards the East Metro. And we have a, a mission of improving health, but a particular commitment to serving underserved populations, um, again, particularly focused in the East Metro area. So. Uh, this time of government program cuts has been really challenging, and of course, health care reform means a world of uncertainty uh, to those of us who work in health care. So I thought I'd, I'd um, actually try to tell you what I think is exciting about the future that we face. You already know that health care can be a big part, will be a big part of the problem going forward if we don't change some things. But um, changing the delivery system is a world of opportunity. Healthcare is just now starting to bust out of the exam room, um, starting to bust out of the hospital emergency rooms and move to churches and workplaces and homes and laptops. The most effective way that we've found right now to reach out to our high-risk young moms who are pregnant is texting. We are currently releasing, uh, are seeing people access our mobile app at the rate of about 10,000 a month, and that's with early, less well-developed applications. And so far, we've delivered more than 10,000 lab test results online to patients who prefer to receive them that way, who want to go into their visit with an oncologist knowing what their results are instead of using that time with a physician to get test results. Um, when I look at the future of healthcare cost increases, I think it's interesting to note that 25 percent of healthcare costs are associated with lifestyle choices. So now there's an opportunity for collaboration. There probably isn't an organization in the room here who doesn't have an opportunity to impact positively with clients' decisions about lifestyle. So um, healthy diet, so five fruits and vegetables a day, exercise five days a week, 30 minutes, each of those exercise opportunities, not smoking and responsible alcohol use, extends life by 14 years and has a dramatic impact on the incidence of new chronic illnesses. That's the potential that we have for changing our community, for changing health, and for changing that trajectory on health care costs. In our primary care systems, and we're not the only system doing this, but we've redesigned the entire way we deliver team-based care. It's not a doctor alone with a patient. It's a doctor with a nurse, with a receptionist, with a lab consultant, with a pharmacist, figuring out how to provide improved services for people with chronic illness. And in terms of accountability, I can look at results that show me reductions in heart attacks, reductions in compromised eyesight, and reductions in amputations. And that's just the beginning stages of the work of redesign that we need to do in healthcare. And more collaborations. We've spent the past 25 years figuring out how to build uh, MRI and imaging centers on every corner, how to make sure that every community has multiple clinics instead of figuring out how to work together. We're trying something new up in the northwest suburbs. I'm working with Alina. So imagine health partners in Alina working together to decide we're going to deliver better health at lower cost to reduce the cost trend for that set of communities up in the northwest suburbs, measuring our results and achieving it in part by not duplicating some of the expensive technology um, that people have wanted to have in their communities in the past. We'll do it, perhaps, but we'll do it once, not multiple times. Um, I also have found an amazing thing, um, Sarah mentioned that I've been really involved with the Itasca project, um, particularly the work on disparities, and who would have believed that the relationships we built five years ago would turn out to be the very people we would turn to, to work with on grassroots organizing, advocacy, and unexpected partnerships when it came to seeing the reductions in the general assistance Medicaid program. 
Um, so investing in relationships, I think, is a really important asset. And the only other closing remark I'd like to make is, we've talked a lot this morning about leadership, but we've talked about it more as a solo act. I don't view leadership as a solo act. I view leadership as a collaborative act. And in fact, if we can't tap into the energy, commitment, and really heartfelt um, uh, investment of time and energy that our colleagues in our workplaces make with us, we aren't going to succeed in the new normal. So I think part of our challenge is um, adapting our leadership styles to make sure that we're getting the best, the best thinking, the most creative ideas, and the greatest amount of synergy and teamwork that we can um, in working together. So um, that's the one topic I hope there's a chance to explore more fully is um, the people part of leadership in difficult times.